So we're going to fit Teva with her prong collar today. Teva's about 75 pounds. Her owner has a very difficult time while she's very strong. She's pulling me now. As you can see, Teva's got on a clip collar. This one is actually, yeah, I guess it's plastic. This part's metal, but the clip is plastic. Remember, I tell you that they break all the time. So we're going to want to put a carabiner on that. Tiva, are you sitting on it? Yep, you're sitting on it. So I'll show you that in a second. Tiva, sit on. So I'm putting a medium on Tiva just because the metal size, so remember we talked about millimeter size. Drake, that's enough. Uh, the smaller metal, I think Tiva could bend given her strength. So we're putting on our Herm Springer collar. You want it to fit snug, but not so tight that it's applying any sort of deep pressure into her skin. So I'm doing the first wrap around. You can see that's going to be way too big. So I'm taking out a link. a little looser day one. If I tighten that up, I think that's going to be too tight. We want it to be where the D-ring is on her right because she's going to walk on my left. We will always clip the leash to the D-ring. Now she may get a little sensitive about having this metal on her neck for the very first time in her life. Remember we talked about our carabiner. I'm going to connect that to her regular collar. And to this stop. Good. And to this dead ring. So that if for some reason the prong collar came loose, she would still be connected. Now it's important to note about your carabiners that they have a weight rating. This one's weighted to 150 pounds, so it's actually uh, twice the power of her, <laughs> uh, twice her weight capability. So if she gets really pulling, the carabiner is not going to break. It's not going to pull either. Okay. So we're going to go do a little leash work, uh, introducing her to this prong collar. We'll talk about pressure and release a little bit more as she gets introduced to this. There's one more thing I want to tell you while I'm on the topic of prong collars that I didn't mention in the other day. If you're buying a Herm Springer, you can't actually do what I'm about to show you. But with a lot of these collars, you can unhook it at the very last piece. See what that piece looks like? What happens though a lot of times is people will twist the chain, twist the chain when they go to clip it back together, right? So they get the pieces put back together. The chain will have a twist in it. I actually untwisted that one um, when I did it. So they unhook at the end. That's the easiest place to unhook. Then they twist that piece when they're putting it back together. And the chain, when you put it on the dog, you see that? It doesn't look like it now, but the D-ring um, is actually on the inside. And when you pull that up, it actually loops around that piece and when it's on the dog you will not get this free movement of the chain and this will not be nearly as effective it's likely to be tighter than normal and you won't get a good correction on that so just be aware of that if you're using any other type of collar than the Herm Springer to make sure that chain uh, does not get twisted when you clip it back together the easiest way to prevent that is to snap it apart somewhere other than the end pieces, the pieces closest to the rings. Okay? So just a little note on that. All right, we're off to train. Catch up later.
Tiva and I are on our first outing with the prong collar. This is not really about walking. Uh, <laughs> she's excited. Uh, I tell people the first time you're going to take your dog for a walk, for a dog that pulls, don't go for a walk. Just do some work in your driveway, in your yard. Let them start getting the feeling of pressure on the collar. I don't really care what collar you're talking about. The work is the same. So when she pulls, she's going to feel pressure. And as she steps into me, that pressure gets released. The goal here is that she starts following me around. So pressure. Good. Anytime she feels that pressure and turns her way back towards me, uh, I'm going to mark that with a good. What will happen as I progress through the day is I'm going to be a lot more purposeful in my walking and I'm going to start walking some patterns in the yard. But if she misses keeping up with me, she'll get tension on the collar, pressure on the collar. And uh, when she comes towards me, we'll mark that with good and reward her for that. So it's all about teaching her to turn the pressure off the collar. You know, anytime she feels it engage, that she has the capability to turn it off by moving towards me or with me. And um, heading our way. Good! She is dragging a leather leash with her as well. I dropped it just because I didn't want to carry it right now. Come on. So lots of pressure right there. Good. Pressure. Good. Now all I'm doing is not walking. I'm not letting her lead here. I've stopped. I'm milling around doing whatever I want. Pressure. Good. No. Good. Good girl. Look at you. Come on. Let's go. I'm not worried about her passing me right now. I'm worried about introducing her to this collar. Nope. Good. I'm letting her realize the leash is only so long. When she gets too far, there's pressure engagement. She stays with me or responds to that pressure by moving towards me. It's a better decision. I'm stopping. Good girl. Good. Good. Good girl. Pressure. Good. Remember, this is not about an actual walk. It's about collar introduction, introduction to pressure on the collar. So if she pulls, a, if she tries to pull further than the leash I'm allowing her, she will feel pressure. Right here, pressure. Good, good, good. Now I'm gonna start walking sort of opposite of her. Backing up. Good. Let her go. Pressure. Good. She's doing real well. We're going to continue this a little bit and what you'll see later today is Again, me getting a whole lot more uh, pattern oriented where I'm setting the tone and the pace and engaging pressure on her collar, but I really need to make sure she gets it before we advance. See you soon. It's been a little while working with Tiva this morning, and we're going to start doing some more. Um,
leash work. This part of the work is about getting her to follow me. And in order to do that, I need to be important. I need to be more uh, interesting than whatever she smells or the distractions that might have her attention. So we're going to spend about 15 or 20 minutes doing this and then I'm going to put her away for a rest, which is an important piece of the equation. Rest and processing time. So, but what we're going to do right now is work a couple of patterns in the yard. So I'm going to move to those trees out there wait for a few minutes I'm then gonna move back that way maybe towards the back of the house wait for a few minutes and then I'm coming back to this tree or maybe that one I hadn't decided um, and wait for a few more minutes not really gonna talk to her if she deviates she's gonna feel if she deviates from following me she's gonna get engagement on the leash and um, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to communicate it to her. I'm just going to let her feel that pressure until she chooses to step in it and um, continue her motion with me. So um, we'll put these pieces together as we go. Um, no communication to her as to when I'm going or that I'm going. And in fact, I like that she's very distracted by that right now. she's pulling against me. I don't care. I'm going to keep moving. She's still pulling. Because there's Huey. No, you No, heel. Good. Good girl. Nope, heel. Tiva, sit. Good. 
good. We still got some work to do, but we are making great progress. Good girl, Tiva. Tiva, look at me. Up here, Tiva.